So if you're new to Yunnan food, I'm guessing chewy might not be the first adjective that springs to mind when you think the word potato. But stay with me here. Everyone the world over wants a smooth mashed potato, and this honey pounded potato definitely fits that bill. The big question is how to get there. If you're familiar with the classic Western mash, you probably know how most chefs tend to crack that nut. Dabs and dabs of butter. Up. <laughs> One stick. Two sticks. One pound of European butter. Yes, we're doing a three to one ratio. Um, and then equal parts butter to potato by weight. This will add a rich flavor and slightly sour notes from our culture. And listen, I'm definitely not one of those health food guys. I'm not judging. But for me personally, after one bite equal part butter and potato, I'm ready to take a nap. And after a serving, I'm basically good to hibernate the winner. These Yunnan potatoes approach the problem a bit differently. The potatoes are pounded until smooth, which simultaneously gives it this chewy, springy texture, then loaded up with chilies and herbs. And even if you wind up still preferring that rich buttery mash in the end, what is for certain is that this dish employs some really cool technique that can also help us understand the humble potato a bit better. So right, to get started, let's talk potato. While there are some exceptions, usually most mashed potato dishes call for something super flowery like a russet, or maybe an all-purpose like a Yukon Gold. This mashed potato is one of those exceptions. You'll need about 300 grams of the waxiest potato you can find. Not only are floury potatoes not good here, they won't even work, and we'll go over why in just a minute. Today, we're using Yunnan small potato. They're quite similar in consistency to red bliss, which are also sometimes used. So wash and remove any sprouts from your potatoes, then toss on a rapidly bubbling steamer. Alternatively, in the oven, wrapped with tinfoil would also totally work, up to you, but steaming is more traditional, so that's just the route we went. Then just let those steam until cooked through, or about 20 minutes. After that time, shut off the heat, take them out, and let them cool down to the point where they're no longer hot to the touch. Then just grab the potatoes and peel them by hand. We're doing this now because if you peeled beforehand, the potato would absorb too much moisture when steaming, making it really difficult to develop the smooth, chewy consistency we're looking for. And then with these peeled, now we can pound. So, no matter what, you're going to need a mortar and pestle for this recipe, one that's big enough to work a potato in. In an ideal world, we'd be using one of those massive mortars that they pound with in Yunnan and Thailand, but this guy will work just fine so long as we start by going one potato at a time. Then just buckle in and get comfortable because we'll be pounding this for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, two minutes in, you can start to see that the potatoes are already beginning to break down and become sticky, forming this really satisfying to pound elastic sort of consistency. What's going on here is really quite interesting. See, for comparison's sake, here's what happens if we used a Yukon Gold instead. After that same amount of time, two minutes in, the potato is slightly sticky, but nothing like our waxy Yunnan potato. And then if you try to do the same thing with a floury potato like a russet, get ready for an exercise in futility. So this kind of bothered me for a bit. A floury potato like a russet contains more starch, so you'd think that it'd actually end up being better for this kind of thing. So it's not just a matter of percent starch, there's actually something inherent to the quality of waxiness that lets the potato become elastic. But then even though you hear it all the time, what exactly is waxiness? So quick refresher, starch is a mix of two polymers, amylose and amylopectin. Both molecules are chains of glucose, the difference is in the structure. Amylose is basically one long line or spiral, while amylopectin is highly branched and resembles more of a web. For most natural sources of starch, you're usually looking at between 10 to 30% amylose, but there are some plants that have been cultivated to be almost purely amylopectin. These plants are referred to as waxy. There's a variety of waxy corn, there's waxy rice, aka sticky rice, and recently they've even developed a waxy wheat. So why does pounding the waxy potato work while well, a floury potato just makes a mash? Turning to the ever-eminent Harold McGee, Pounding or kneading reorganizes the bushy amylopectin into an intermeshed mass that'll resist changes in its structure. In other words, it makes it smooth and chewy. This is the same idea as pounding mochi in Japan, or how niangao rice cakes are made elsewhere in China. So look at what happens if we add a touch of steamed sticky rice to our previously uncooperative floury potato. It almost immediately starts to get sticky, and after about 10 minutes of pounding, it's almost indistinguishable from the waxy Yunnan potato after the same amount of time. But regardless, you're looking to stop pounding here once the small potato bits are almost all broken down and it's formed into this silky uniform hole. Again, this should take about 10 minutes, but if your end goal is something a bit more reminiscent of a classic Western mash, feel free to stop and taste after about five. 
Then season with a quarter teaspoon salt, a pinch of MSG, and a quarter teaspoon Sichuan peppercorn powder. Mix that in, and if you like, you could also add in a sprinkle of anise powder, which is also pretty classic here. Then for the herbs, you've got some choices. Unfortunately, specifically for these honey mashed potatoes, probably the most classic addition would be something called piazai gun, which is the root of a type of jiuzai Chinese chive. Another common herb would be some sawtooth coriander, aka culantro, which I know can sometimes be another relatively annoying item to source. So to sub those, for our version here, we're using a mix of 20 grams green garlic, and you could alternatively use jiuzai, 20 grams of cilantro to sub the culantro, and of course, two cloves of garlic together with one fresh heaven-facing chili, and Thai bird's eye would also work just fine. So mince the garlic, slice the chili, cut the green garlic, and ditto with the cilantro. If you can buy cilantro with the stem attached, by the way, be sure to include that too, it's got a lot of taste. So now just add in your chopped herbs of choice, give it another brief pound of mix, and out. And with that, your Yunnan pounded mashed potatoes are done. So pounding is a very common cooking method in Yunnan. And there are a bunch of different styles of pounded potatoes. Uh, and this is of more of the Hani people's version of it. They call it Yang Yu Baba. Baba means something that's soft and chewy. And there are some other style that they just like mash things together real quick and just like more a semblance to the old grandma's mashed potato style. So we're off next week for Christmas and we'll be going to Le Shan, which is in the south of Sichuan and which is the originating place for many Sichuan dishes. So remember to check out our Instagram, Chinese Cooking the Mystify, for food and travel pictures. So right, as always, check out the other link in the description box for detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.